Today I'm going to turn my voxel engine project into a mini game where you fight aliens and try to survive as long as you can. I know I say that every single video and it never happens because I remake everything every video, okay? It's called improvements, I swear I'll finish it one day, okay? But before I make the game, I have to fix a few things. Like some comments pointed out, my particles look bad. They never disappear at the end when they are done and they can be seen through voxels. That's very bad, so I made them a bit better. You can no longer see them through voxels and they also disappear when they are done. I can still improve them later, but at least now it looks decent. Then some other comments said that my FOV looked bad. I actually agree with this, so I messed around with the settings a bit and I also made the FOV account for the aspect ratio of the screen and I think it's much better now. I also added a way to change the display resolution so people with older computers can still run this and play the game with decent FPS. I gotta say though, low resolution kinda slaps. The true PS1 graphics experience. It reminds me of playing Star Wars Battlefront on the PS2 with my dad. There's some charm to low resolution stuff. Anyway, the biggest problem I had at that point was that the destruction still caused a small lag spike. It was just enough to be annoying. I tried optimizing it but there was not much I could do. Any destruction had to update the buffers and change at least a few hundred voxels which caused a lag. The world loading is also terrible and takes literally over 30 seconds just to load the first node. How long is this going to take? But then I realized, why am I trying to optimize loading on the CPU when my world is already in a shader ready buffer for my ray tracer? I can load the world using a shader too. You know, you don't have to be a fan of Elon Musk but that quote that he said is very true. The worst mistake of an engineer is to try to optimize something that should not exist. So why do I keep trying to optimize my games? <laughs> so I decided to do a little test to see if shaders could load and edit my world faster and... Well, it's not even close. The setup I have right now with the CPU can barely edit a few hundred voxels without a lag spike. And it takes a while to load 3 million voxels. In this test, I am editing almost my whole world every frame and it is barely lagging. I can only imagine how fast this would load and destroy the world. But changing this to use the GPU would require me to remake literally my whole world loading and destruction in a shader. <laughs> Damn, I've already remade it like three times. Ah, oh, sh**. Here we go again. It took a lot of work to get the basic raw gen to work in a shader, but I managed to do it with little tests of waves and to be honest it was pretty fast. Then I tried making it load the world in smaller parts to make the lag be more spread and less in spikes, but it was still pretty laggy. Next I wanted to add 3D noise like I had before and thanks to a bit of code yonking, I was able to get a basic 3D noise to generate voxels. It fills the whole world with it and it still generates pretty fast. Nice! Tweaking the parameters gives me a world a bit similar to before, but I'll still have to work on that later. For now, I made it look just okay while I improved the performance. Speaking of the devil, the loading was a lot faster on the shader, but it was still not enough. Shaders are usually much faster because they can do things in parallel thanks to GPU black magic that I don't understand at all, but the problem is that when I turn that on here, it breaks my world. Why? Well, it's kinda like when you have many students doing the same homework in high school. The more people you have working on it, the more chance you have that one of them will mess it up. And that's kinda what happens here. Each invocation of the shader is loading a different part of the world, but for that they need to create more nodes in the octree, and they don't see what the other invocations have already created, so they end up creating the same nodes, and that breaks everything. But don't worry, you can fix this by using a cartoon from when I was a kid, Atomic Betty. Without the Betty. Atomic operations are in sync across all the invocations, so they can prevent that. Pretty neat, huh? Except... 
that the current version of WJSL that I'm using doesn't support them. Well, no worries, I'll just update my bevy which will update my WJSL and allow me to use them. Ah, of course updating would do that. Can I ever make a video without everything breaking? After hours of fixing errors created by the update, I could finally run my shutter using Atomic Operations and... Well, at least it builds now, but it's even more broken than before. <sighs> it took me a lot of digging to find what the issue was, but I finally managed to find it. I fixed it and I had a pretty nice world loading really fast with no lag. Epic. Now I guess it's time to make it look good like before. The first step is to fix the lighting that somehow broke in all of this. And yeah, with the lighting back it looks a lot better. I also made the world a bit more interesting like before. After that, I wanted to add destruction with the bacon bus, but I couldn't yet because now that my world was loaded in the GPU, my colliders didn't work anymore. So you guessed it, I had to remake my movement and collisions in the GPU too. Which means that now my game is almost fully on the GPU, which was super fun to do. Except for the parts where it wasn't. Damn, that boy is slippery. <laughs> I was finally able to add destruction, and well, it's a bit buggy still, but it's good enough. I didn't want to get sued by people getting epilepsy attacks, so I had to fix the flicker on destruction though. <laughs> then I made the destruction fill back with the right voxels, and I started working on unloading the map. Unloading was surprisingly hard and created a lot of visual glitches since I had to reuse unloaded node indices when creating new nodes and some of those indices were still cached as the neighbors of some nodes. That created some sort of portals between nodes, which was a cool and totally planned feature. I fixed most of that, added back the HP and mana, added a new enemy that flies around the player and shoots little bullets at him, and uh, of course it's broken. I don't even know how this feature can be so broken, it's just a little guy shooting bullets. How can it end up like this? I swear, that enemy is so bad, all of his code looks so buggy. <laughs> oh wait, that is my code. I fixed that, made it do damage to the player, made the enemy be hit by fireballs so the player can fight back, and it was epic. Then I added a wave system to spawn more and more enemies over time, and GG, game of the decade, thank you all, I know, I'm just that good. You can now spawn, watch a world slowly load with maybe some holes in it, have some enemies shoot orange balls at you to damage you, you can also destroy the world and hopefully not create a hole into the void and you can run around. What more can you possibly want in life? To have something cool with no bugs? To be loved? I gotta stay realistic guys. I think it's pretty cool how most of the game can run on the GPU in compute shaders. That makes it very fast but inconvenient to code. Oh and also, in the next video I'll be recording my entire engine from scratch a third time so make sure you stay tuned. I'm just kidding guys. Or am I? <laughs>